On today's machine repair video, we are going to be repairing a head tilting adjusting shaft on a Bridgeport 2J milling machine. This is a must see video for anyone new to machining. The adjuster screw has been broken off, so this will just spin and it won't actually turn the gear to make the adjustment to align the head. Here are some of the questions we're going to answer in today's video. How did this happen? What could have been done to prevent this? What does it take to repair this problem? Watch this video to the end and you'll have the answers to all of these questions. Okay, so the problem we have today is uh, we have the left right adjust screw has broken inside the machine. So you see that the machine is set askew by a few degrees. And what's happened is uh, the student was trying to adjust the head for tramming the head and didn't unlock the lock nuts and put too much force through the adjuster screw and broke the adjuster screw off. The problem here is that the student didn't understand the correlation between the locks and the adjuster. So I'll show you on this side that this is the adjuster for the left right adjustment and these four nuts are the locks and you cannot adjust the screw without unlocking these nuts. This shaft has a groove cut into it for a retention uh, screw and that becomes a weak point. And if you put too much force on this adjuster, it'll actually twist off into a blind. The adjuster screw has been broken off. So this will just spin and it won't actually turn the gear to make the adjustment to align the head. So I'm gonna go through the steps and show you how to repair this. And I'm also gonna to explain to you why this is an unnecessary repair. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna strip the accessories off and get it ready to take the head right off of the machine and take it up to the workshop. To remove the head, I've made a, uh, a draw bar out of some threaded rod and an eye hook, and I'm gonna drop it down through the draw bar hole, and I'm gonna pick it with the cherry picker. To me, this is uh, one of the easiest ways to remove a head from a milling machine. I've made a couple of aluminum plates so I don't damage the, uh, the nose of the spindle. I just have to spin these four nuts off. I've already taken the air draw bar. I've locked out the machine and I've removed the, the forward reverse switch and the wire lead and locked out the machine. So there's nothing, there's no accessories holding the head to the machine base anymore. So I've got tension on the crane. There's a special washer that's in the bore that I want to save. I don't want to lose these because they're their size. Okay, I'm going to pull the head off. And that's it. So now I'm going to lower it onto a cart. I'm going to take it upstairs to the workshop in the elevator and I'm going to um, go through the repair process and I'll show you how I remove that broken shaft out of a blind hole. So while I have the head off the machine, this gives me access to this pinion gear. This is a 360 degree gear here, and it only rides on the top few teeth. So I'm gonna inspect that for damage. I see there's a damaged tooth here, it looks like, but also these bolts come loose. So I can see that I, I'm gonna take this time, rotate this gear so I can get a fresh set of teeth up on the top, and I'm gonna clean this out and put these bolts in with Loctite. So I've done some preventive maintenance while I have the machine apart. 
So I have the milling machine head supported from a chain fall, and we have access to the back side of the mount. So this machine surface mounts to the column, okay, the ram. And this is the, the back side of the adjuster. And when you adjust this, it turns the worm, and then that worm crawls that pinion gear that we saw on the, on the base of the machine. Now you can see, if I turn this adjuster screw, you'll see that the worm is stationary. And that's because it was adjusted without the locks being unlocked and uh, the operator overpowered the adjuster and twisted it off. Now, I have a sample of what this looks like. So here, this is like this, and then the end of the shaft goes in and drives that little worm. And what happens is that because it's machined to a smaller diameter, it's more uh, delicate, easy to break. And somebody twisted it off. So what I have to do as a repair tech is I have to extract this portion of the shaft and then I have to go deep inside and I have to extract the stub of the shaft out through the hole. And it's a blind hole, I can't push it through. So I, how I pull it out is I drill and tap the shaft and I use a slide hammer to extract it out of the hole. And then I have a long drill and a long tap and I go deep inside the hole and I drill and tap the stub and then I try to get a bite on it and pull it out with a slide hammer and then I can put the replacement parts back in. Okay, so I have the, uh, the broken parts extracted and it was a bit of a, a challenge for me. Um, I'll show you what I had to do, but um, in the past I've been able to I've been able to drill a hole into the the stub in the blind hole and put a, put a tap on it and then pull it out with a slide hammer. Um, but today I was not successful in that. Uh, what happened was um, I couldn't get it to, to get past the burr of the brake. So what I did was I went into here with an angle grinder and I cut the gear into two pieces and, and took it apart um, the, the rough way, but that's sometimes the way you have to do it. So now I've cleaned it up, I've degreased it, I've gotten rid of all of the metal filings and chips and, and debris. Um, I've oiled the cast iron and then I've taken some grease and I've packed it into the blind hole and uh, I've greased the shaft. Also I've uh, installed the key and I've oriented the key with a piece of uh, or a little mark of paint pen and I've also marked the keyway with some paint on the on the worm so that when it's in the hole I can align I can align the parts okay so they go together nicely so now I'm going to try this without a test here's the groove for the set screw to hold it in position okay and then that lines up with this here okay so I'm going to I'm going to try to put this together I have a brass hammer to give it a little, a little bump, and then I can feel the parts come together. And then I make the adjustment as it comes in. And you see my, my uh, paint pen is a little north, so I can, I can bring that down into alignment. And hopefully, I can push it together with, uh, without making any burrs on it. It should just line itself up as it goes in and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put a an allen wrench into the set screw hole and I'm going to feel the groove as it comes by okay oh, here I can feel the set screw come by or the, I'm sorry I can feel the slot of the set screw Okay, so now the slot is lined up with the set screw hole and I've saved the set screw, kept it handy and I will just, and it's a, it has a uh, point on it, okay, and I'll turn that in and I'll feel the, 
the groove and the shaft, and then we've got our position set. Okay, so I'm gonna get that in. I need the surf, I need the set screw to be below the machine surface so that I don't get any interference on the uh, on the ram of the mill. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I can turn the adjuster shaft without the set screw holding it taut, right? So I'm gonna back it off a little bit so that all it's doing is holding position, but it's not actually uh, interfering with the motion, okay? So I've got that below there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some grease onto that gear, uh, give it one more wipe, and put it on the cart and take it down ready for reassembly. We're back in the shop, and the machines are back together. Uh, so let's recap what we've done. So the problem, the problem was that this left-right adjuster screw was sheared off because somebody tried to make the adjustment while the nuts were locked and they overpowered it and sheared the, the, the adjuster screw. So on this particular machine, this is a different one than I've taken apart, but for example, what I've tried to do is I've tried to color code these so that the students, uh, because they're learning, uh, they can identify that these are related. So that's a trial on a couple machines to see if this, uh, this sorts the problem out. So this is a very preventable problem. If the students loosen these nuts, then they can move forward to adjust the head left or right to their alignment. Before I reinstall the head, I check the, um, the condition of the, the gear inside and I didn't like the condition of the gear because the top teeth were damaged so I was able to rotate it, reposition it to some fresh surface, cleaned it, greased it, then reinstalled the head and then reinstalled the accessories on the head. I am glad to see that you enjoyed the video. I need to take a moment to thank the star of the video, Andrew Spencer. He did an awesome job. Thank you very much. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. And if you have a way of improving this technique or you have a story to tell, please leave them in the comment section that other people can benefit from your knowledge as well. Thank you for watching again. Have a great night.